Programmatic Academy, Course 1, which covers basics of programmatic. This is Lesson 2, which will be, we will be discussing programmatic ecosystem. Okay? The basis of a lot of programmatic is supply and demand. Essentially, what programmatic and real-time bidding have created is an economy of users and behaviors, which is very similar to the supply and demand in any sort of economic model that we look at. Okay, so programmatic media puts into practice the basic law of economics, supply and demand. So on one side, you have the demand side, which are the buyers. These are the DSPs. These are the people that are buying inventory, that are buying uh, impressions. Okay, in the middle, obviously, you have the inventory where, every, where we meet with the supply side, who obviously supplies the inventory. Those are the publishers. Those are the websites. And through the mechanisms of technology and uh, ad exchanges and private deals, we meet right in the middle. The demand side buys, the supply side sells. Okay. Now, one thing that a lot of times drives the price of whether it's CPM in you know programmatic or it's the cost of goods in the regular economy is when there is not enough supply for the demand, the price tends to go up. Okay. Now, every time I've shown this in the past, it can be a little daunting, a little confusing, uh, but I'm going to try and explain it as best I can. So over here on this side, whoops, go back. Over here on this side, we have the advertiser. If we look from left to right. So the process from the buy side starts with the advertiser investment, okay? They, they hand that over to the agency trade desk. The agency trade desks through an ad server, okay, basically traffics their media, their creatives, their banners, their videos, etc. That is then uploaded to the DSP, okay, which is the platform that is actually connected to the ad exchange. Remember, the ad exchange is where we have basically a lot of the uh, a lot of the no most of the inventory available in different sizes different formats um, mobile desktop video everything okay but let's go back to the DSP for a second so the DSP is not only connected to the ad exchange but the DSP is usually connected to third-party data and then that third-party data is what a trader on the DSP side will use to buy uh, to use that data to buy the specific audience within the ad exchange okay and the mechanisms used for buying is usually real-time bidding or at least the biggest amount of inventory is bought through real-time bidding but not always a lot of it is done through private deals which we will discuss at a later at a later time also uh, connected to the DSP is the a DMP. The DMP stands for Data Management Platform. And this is essentially a warehouse of your audience, of your users. Um, and this is something we'll also discuss later on. But here's where a lot of your audience uh, profiles are and or you can basically uh, input, save, and use for at a later time for campaigns the audience profiles and then there's other other providers also connected to the DSP uh, and as well to the SSP um, other providers can be something like uh, brand safety or brand verification technology now on the SSP side this is our publishers okay this is our uh, let's say ESPN this is our BuzzFeed or whatever, and they are also, you know, connected through their ad server, um, and essentially it goes all the way back to the um, audience. 
Okay, so the SSP is what handles the selling of the publisher inventory, okay? And like I said in the previous slide, we all meet in the middle here to sell and buy through mechanisms, through data, using DMPs and other technology providers. Now, one of the first things we discussed was the agency trade desk. The agency trade desk is essentially a company that resides within a traditional media agency and that agency trade desk does the buying for the agency's clients. Um, it could also be an independent organization, uh, not necessarily attached to an agency. So for example, if you know of the trade desk uh, as a company, they are independent and so far not affiliated with any agency. Uh, a company or an agency trade desk may or may not have their own proprietary software in order to trade programmatic campaigns. A lot of times what will happen is they will create deals with, uh, for example, the trade desk that I just mentioned, uh, Turn, Media Math, or use, you know, DBM with, uh, or Google's DBM as a trading platform. It's, and as I mentioned, uh, previous, the agency's trade desk is usually uh, set up in order to serve the holding company's main clients, okay? Uh, but there also may be uh, contracts and buys that are done outside of the main clients. And as we saw in the previous slide, the agency is, you know, essentially created with the trade desk or the trade desk, excuse me, is created within the agency, uh, connected to the ad server, and then connects to the DSP. Now, as I mentioned, the biggest part here for the demand side is the DSP, the demand side platform. Okay, the agency trade desk, which we just discussed, is usually connected through uh, the, the DSP. And that when I mean connection, I don't mean it's technical connection. I mean, it could be a technical connection, but usually what will happen is on the agency trade desk side, if they're using uh, a DSP, there will be some sort of agreement. And essentially they will log into a DSP such as MediaMath or AppNexus. Okay. Now the benefit that a DSP provides for advertisers is, you know, central access to publishers, networks, ex exchanges, uh, the targeting and control options, robust reporting, optimization and buying algorithm, really what sets apart uh, the demand side platforms is, you know, how good their algorithm is, because essentially what happens is most of the uh, inventories that they are connected to, the networks, everybody has access to them in one way or another, okay? Uh, and, you know, uh, also the technology they're connected to, such as brand protection, uh, whitelisting, content, viewability, etc. Okay, if we look over here, these columns, on one side we have the DSPs, and the other side we have the, you know, exchanges that they are usually connected to. The DSP is basically the workhorse in the programmatic buying ecosystem. On the other side, is the SSP, okay? So if you're a publisher, let's say you wanted to set up a, a website and your website becomes successful, you have a lot of people visiting your site, you have a lot of inventory, uh, meaning impressions that you wanna sell, what you would do is you would contact an SSP such as Abnexus or Rubicon and usually with these bigger SSPs, you would have to meet some sort of uh, inventory threshold. You know, sometimes there may be 20 million impressions a month, sometimes less, sometimes more. It all depends, okay? They would give you a tag that you would put on your site, which would give you, which would then give you access to push your inventory out into the 
exchanges. That's what an SSP does. Okay, so it basically gives you access to an advertiser, you know, networks, exchanges, the buying DSPs, uh, yield management, which means, you know, to optimize the revenue that you're making off of your inventory, and, you know, things like reporting, blocking advertisers, creating price floors, and uh, private deals. Now, a lot of times what gets confusing for people new to programmatic is how a lot of companies are both an SSP and a DSP. Take AppNexus, for example. Uh, take Google, who has uh, both functions as well. And there's also the talk of this being a big conflict of interest, okay? Because obviously, if you are selling um, your own inventory into an exchange, people say, some say that you could give it preference over someone else. And when essentially uh, at, the, at the exchange level and an SSP and DSP, it's supposed to be a neutral option, but uh, in the real world, that doesn't really happen. Um, and a lot of and a lot of what is happening currently with header bidding is a response uh, to these sorts of, of things and a way for publishers to, you know, get a, a better share of the uh, inventory and a better price for their inventory. Okay, so as we talked about how a DSP is used, DSPs are the interface that facilitate access to the exchanges and publishers. Now let's look at a trader. The trader has to decide what DSP to use for a campaign. All right, sometimes in a trade desk will be connected to various DSPs. All right, uh, it could be MediaMath, AppNexus, the trade desk could be Turn, could be some others. The trade the trader uploads and op optimizes the campaigns. The trader negotiates deals and uses DSPs to connect to them. In this case, we're talking about private deals. A typical trader can handle about 30 campaigns each. This is if you are on the DSP side, or the, excuse me, the um, agency trading desk side, and you how a trader's role is defined. Okay. Now. If a DSP, excuse me, is if an agency trade desk um, has to decide what DSP to use for what campaign, a lot of times, as we look down here, what a trader will do is they will run the campaign in two uh, separate DSPs and run what's called a head to head. In the end, they see which uh, DSP performed best, and then that is what the one they will use. The DSP, as I mentioned, is the workhorse in the buying in the programmatic buying ecosystem. Now, how is the SSP used? Okay, we have the sales rep um, or the account manager. They are usually uh, trying to sell private deals through to the DSPs. Okay. Um, these are the guys, and me is I'm primarily on on the buying side of things. So, this is the person that calls me up, um, sends me an email through LinkedIn, uh, sends me an email directly. They try and find ways for me to, you know, connect through a private deal to their publisher uh, on the SSP. Um, okay, and so sales acquisition may be on the lookout to sign more pubs, more publishers, so they also go out and look for more websites that to sign up they may also seek out more inventory if uh, they don't have enough to meet the demand and they provide you know the tech for publishers to to sell the inventory that's on the SSP side and what a sales rep or account manager does obviously there's the technical side of connecting the the sites and the publishers to the SSP that we're, we won't get into but for you know work sake, uh, this is the part you have to be concerned about, or at least familiar with what the sales rep does. So when, okay. Next, publisher 
ad network and ad exchange right so what is the difference a lot of people get confused especially when we talk about ad network and ad exchange so let's go over here on the left hand side we have publisher basically a publisher is a website for example allrecipes.com is a publisher now that publisher may belong to an ad, ne ad network or it may not and that network is nothing but a collection of sites often in a vertical and at a fixed CPM for example travelspike.com the ad network model is very old as we saw in, in the in the first lesson on the, on the history of programmatic the ad network model came to be around uh, 95 94 96 and I mean they are still around in some capacity but they have evolved and have also you know become parts of ad exchanges now the ad exchange okay is basically a group of publishers and that networks which allow inventory to be bought usually through real-time bidding or RTB okay the example is adx Google's adx that is an ad exchange all right um, so the difference here is that it combines publishers and ad networks all different you know types of formats uh, and then and that's at an RTB price meaning it varies and it's, it's on a bid basis the network is usually fixed CPM and and is usually by category or specific verticals of sites and then the publisher is one site all right we've come to the end of lesson two this is the quiz part that you will see and you know do the best you can below if you have any questions please leave them and I will try and answer them as soon as possible.